Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our devotionals. Um, great to be with you today. Special day for me. This is my 500th devotion that I've done in the last two years. Five a week for the last two years, and you can see that's 500 devotions like this. So I just want to say thank you, man, to those of you who've hung with me through this period of time. Thank you so much for just getting up and meeting with me in the morning like this and just sharing this time. I feel so privileged. I really mean that to be able to take this time and spend it with you. So that's 500 down. I don't know how many more to go, but this has been fun. Thanks for being with me. We're in the book of Mark chapter 4, and I want to read to you the passage that is before us. It's about Jesus leading his disciples into the midst of a storm. Let me read this to you. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, and he was not in a good mood when he woke up. He rebuked the wind. And he said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Then he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves, they obey him. What a great story. Let me talk to you about storms today. First of all, I would like to suggest to you that there are three types of storms. There are storms that come into our lives, simply they're out of our control because we live in a messed up world. That's one type of storm. And the consequence of living in this messed up world is there are things that happen to us that we never program for. They bring storms with them. Then the other type of storm, a little closer to home, this one, is the storm that you yourself create. When you deliberately go against the word or the will of God for your life, there's a storm around the corner. And it's of your making. And when we come to those storms that we're honest enough to say, man, I created the storm. This was my doing. This is my wrongdoing. And I need to sort out that storm. Sometimes God will say, I have to stand at a distance and watch you make your way through this storm. I'm sad for you, but you created it. You now see it out. And very often, sometimes, even in the midst of the storms that we ourselves make, God is still gracious. And he gives us the ability to be able to see the storm through. But the third type of storm is the storm that God sends. That's the one that we read in the book. Jesus said to his disciples, come, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. He just failed to tell them that he was taking them into the eye of the storm. He didn't say that to them. Why didn't he say that? Because he was testing them. And when he fell asleep in the stern of the boat, it was just a test for the disciples. When they woke Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, don't you even care for us? Don't you care that we're drowning? What a slap in Jesus's face. After Jesus had done so many things with his disciples, they had seen him weather the storms of life and they'd seen him raise Lazarus and help the sick people get better and heal the blind man. They'd seen him do all of those things. And Jesus shakes his head. He's not just angry with the storm and, uh, and tells it to be quiet. He looks with great sadness at his disciples and said, Man, you guys failed a test. Didn't you know I was right here? And even though I would have appeared to be asleep, do you think that I would let you drown? After all that we have been through, do you think that that would have been the case? And it was a storm of God's making simply to test his disciples. People, don't we go through the same stuff that God puts us through some of the storms of life and I want to say to you that if that storm is not because of just the, the nature of the world around us, or if that storm is not the, because of your own sinful nature and your own doing, you can pretty much work it out that the last one is the one that it will be. God sends sometimes these storms. He's not being mean, he's just being God. He just wants to test you. He wants to grow your character. He wants you to know that even in the midst of a storm that makes it look like you're just about to sink, He's still with you, and he is in the stern. I think he just uh, was playing asleep, maybe. But anyway, if well, whatever that is, but God is with you in the midst of those kind of storms. 
Maybe today you're in a bit of a storm. Maybe it's a relational one. Maybe it's of your own making. Well, you fix, you mess up, then you fix up and do the best you can at that. But maybe it's a financial one, and the same would apply. But maybe some of these storms that have come upon you are sent of God just to test you and to make sure that you are who you say you are. And when you look back on all that God has done, you look back on His goodness and His grace, how many miracles has He done to protect you, to preserve you, to provide for you, and He's saying, if you want to know how well you'll handle the storm, have a look backwards. Have I ever let you down? I doubt it. And He's the one who says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. No matter how high the waves go, no matter how sad your situation becomes, and I do not belittle anybody's anxiety or sadness, I just want to say to you, God is with you in that storm. And that makes all the difference. We've said it how many times, the presence of Jesus is all that you need. The presence of Jesus makes all of the difference. And that's exactly what happened in this boat that night. Maybe it'd be true of your life as well. Have a good day, people. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.